I'm joined today by Gareth Moore, CEO of Virginia Distillery, and we're going to speak about the effect of climate on American single malt. Thanks for joining us, Gareth. Thank you for having me. So tell me, why, why did you decide to go with American single malt mm -hmm. rather than a more traditional style of American whiskey like bourbon or rye? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Virginia Distillery Company is my, uh, my, my late father's dream. Uh, so, so I can't say that I picked single malt. Uh, single malt was his passion. Uh, he was an immigrant from Ireland and uh, kind of as his retirement project decided that he wanted to, to combine his, his passion for single malts uh, into his new adopted home of Virginia. It's interesting um, because we, we usually associate single malt whiskey with Scotland and Ireland and other cool climate places. Yep, yep. What's the climate like at your distillery? We, we have a, a pretty extreme climate. Um, it, it goes as, uh, I think our record in our warehouses got up to 106 uh, Fahrenheit uh, during the summer. Uh, in the winter, you know, we'll, we'll go well uh, below uh, uh, freezing, uh, sometimes into the teens. So that's very, very different than what you're going to see in Scotland. How does it express itself? You know, we subject bourbon to those kind of extremes a lot. Yep. But we don't see a lot of single malt subjected mm -hmm. to those extremes, at least in America. Right. So what have your observations been? So uh, the, the number one thing that we see is, is we use all used wood. Uh, so uh, a lot of bourbon casks, uh, sherry, uh, cuvee casks, and what, what we've noticed is that we can get a lot deeper into the wood than you might think of uh, with a traditional uh, climate because the, the hotter it gets in the summer, the colder it gets in the winter, allows the, the wood in the cast to expand and contract and kind of pull the, the spirit in and, and push it back out. This is the... Uh, literally the prelude to your first release, that's right, right? That's the right. prelude to Courage and Conviction. How old is this whiskey? So uh, this whiskey is going to have uh, several components. Um, the, the oldest will be just over three years. And then wow, there's, so uh, it, that's like a baby in Scotland. Exactly, exactly. It's exactly. Actually, literally that's, the bare minimum. Exactly, barely legal. So um, that, that that's uh, the backbone of it. And then uh, there's some other components that, that are going to be slightly under uh, three years. Yeah, that's most surprisingly well-developed for only three years. Thank you, um, thank you. Or we thank the climate for that. Well, there's, you know, there's clear bourbon vanilla sweetness and then also sort of a, a juicy nectarine type quality almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a, a Venice note. We're really proud of what, what's able to happen in a, in a short period of time. Um, now, we do suffer from uh, greater losses, uh, you know, with that, that uh, hotter summer does, does come a, and is a, your a proof, lot more. Is your proof going up or down? So, so far, we've, we've seen it level, okay. um, but over a, uh, over a longer period of time, uh, we might we might see some some interesting trends. Is there single malt elsewhere in the world that you think compares or has similarity to what you're doing? Well, in terms of comparison, I'd absolutely go to the um, the climate first. Um, in terms of a, of a good comp, um, and and two that come to mind uh, would be a Cavalan out of uh, Taiwan, mm -hmm. and then uh, Amrut out of India. Well, Amrut and Cavalan are great points of comparison uh, for sure. And I do see some of that similar fruity floral elegance here. So thanks for sharing with us. Absolutely. Thank and, you. Uh, I look forward to see how this develops in the future. So do we. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>